Hello once again, my loyal viewers. This is the Heavy Metal Chemist coming at you with a first in what I hope will be a several part um, lecture series looking at uh, how we can look at molecules using light. Now, I did an overview of this several months back, uh, and I'm going to focus today on X rays, which are quite an interesting thing. Uh, and I'm going to start by looking at a technique called X ray diffraction which is useful for being able to determine the crystal structure of a molecule. Now, in essence, this uh, starts off with a special machine called a diffractometer. Uh, and basically what this is, we have an X-ray source there. We have our sample, and then we have a detector. Now, these things are kind of mounted on a little arm type device and the angle between the two is always the same. We'll call this angle theta and you'll see why it's called this later. Now the sample is mounted on a flat plate which is spinning and the other reason for this, it, it's a complicated reason why you spin the sample but I'll, I'll get around to that eventually. So basically we generate x-rays uh, basically by having a, a metal, usually either copper or molybdenum, uh, these are then have a very very high voltage pass through them, they're kept cool underwater and they generate x-rays, usually a very specific wavelength. This is important because you need that specific wavelength in order to be able to do the analysis properly. Again, we'll come to this in a minute. So the general idea is you fire your x-rays at your sample and then you detect them using a detector. This will be a material which picks up the x-rays hitting it and then converts it to an electrical signal. It knows what angle it is and then you can basically record the intensity of the x-rays um, as you vary the angle. So basically what you'll do is you'll start with your uh, x-ray sourcing detector low down then as the experiment progresses you'll move these up slowly and record how the uh, intensity of the x-rays you detect changes over time. Now the reason for this is you basically end up with, I can't call it a spectrum because it's not a spectrum, uh, crystallographers would kill me if I called it a spectrum, but basically what you do is you plot uh, 2 theta on the x-axis versus intensity or counts on the y-axis. And typically you'd start at maybe 5 degrees 2 theta, so this angle would be 2.5 degrees and go up to 80. Uh, that depends on what your radiation source is because that changes what this graph slash spectrum is going to give you. I, as I, much as I hate to call it a spectrum. Now basically what you'll see typically is a background line and then occasionally you'll get random peaks like this appearing. Well they're not random peaks, there is a very good reason they exist. Like so. Uh, these correspond to certain reflections within your crystal. Uh, you typically use a powder for this, so it'll be a, a kind of packed bed of crystals level with the top of the sample holder. That's important because otherwise it mucks your results up. <clears throat> and basically, from the positioning of these peaks, so most of the software nowadays will automatically tell you where the peaks are, uh, and to a degree, the width of the peaks and the ratios in height of the peaks, you can tell what your compound is because I'm applying this mostly to inorganic compounds because every inorganic compound that's crystalline has a defined crystal structure um, and from that you can compare it with a known database and then figure out whether you've got whether your sample is what you want it to be or not now um, the angle here is important because that relates to what I'm going to come on to now now that I've shown you kind of how the diffractometer works, uh, this is what's called Bragg's Law, um, which was invented by a father and son team in the early 1900s, 1913, they won the Nobel Prize for it. And they actually won it two years running, which was kind of a bit sneaky, but oh well. Anyway, the general principle is if you've got a crystal with like layers of atoms in it, when your X rays can come in, they'll all bounce off um, the, effectively like planes in your crystal, so that'll be one plane, that'll be another plane, that'll be another plane, and so on. And 
these correspond with this angle, the wavelength of your <coughs> um, X-ray source, and various other factors to give you this Bragg's Law equation, which is spelled B A B R A double G, like so, which is N lambda equals 2D sine theta. Now, theta is this angle. Notice we measure 2 theta, which is that plus that. Uh, so you take the sine of that angle. Uh, D is the distance between the two, um, basically between the, the crystal atoms in the crystal, uh, normally measured in, I think it's angstroms, or it could be nanometers. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, <clears throat> that is the... Uh, that's the the difference of the distance between crystals. That is the wavelength of your X-rays, and this is a number because uh, often you will see multiples of a very similar, um, very similar reflection in your spectrum. Because if I add another row to this, you can end up with a reflection between two rows. Uh, one row and a reflection between two rows. So that's where the end comes in. This is just a number which is like a whole number. So, for instance, one, two, etc. So that's the essence of it, really. Um, X ray diffraction is a very useful technique. Um, useful for characterizing new materials. Uh, useful for comparing what you've got with existing materials if you're making something similar to that's already been made. Uh, and X-rays can also be used for a, a variety of other things, but I'll, I'll come on to those in a, in a future lecture to avoid this being too long. But I hope that's given you an idea of uh, X-ray diffraction as a, a starting point. And uh, if you have any questions, do comment or message me. Uh, do like the video, please. Uh, like the channel, subscribe, do all those good things. And um, if you have any requests for future content, please do let me know. Thank you for watching and goodbye.